In this video, we're gonna find the intrinsic value or the fair value price of a stock. Why? So that we don't overpay for some of these ridiculously overvalued stocks. Some people like to talk about how many touchdowns they think Pete Alonso's gonna hit next year. Some friends like to talk muscle cars. Some friends even like to talk about how many eggs they like to put in their birthday cake. Some friends, money nerds like myself, we like to call our friends and, you know, talk about stock prices and, you know, is it a good value or not? <laughs> watch, watch. What up, bro? Hey, JJ. What's up, man? Just sitting here nerding out in stocks. What are you working out? You're out of breath. <laughs> I'm actually just leaving the gym. Get my fat ass back in shape. You are so strong. Hey, I'm nerding out over stocks. What do you got for a target price on Intel? Ooh, Intel. Um, well, I like it where it's at, to be honest, man. Uh, strong balance sheet. I think they have like a current ratio of like in the low twos. And I remember this because I was just looking at it the other day. Um, nice dividend yield, high twos, got a decent payout ratio. Price to earnings is like, God, dude, I don't know, like in the low teens, I think, last time I checked. I mean, to be honest, dude, like I like Intel right here. Uh, you know, the lower it drops, awesome. That's just more icing on the cake. Gosh, dude, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess one thing I would like to see increase on intel is their sales uh i don't know what do you think dude i i yeah i don't even go that deep i was just gonna say i love it now but yeah no if i can get in the mid mid 40s low 40s i will be all over that i'll tell you this it's a great stock to be writing some cash your puts on <laughs> <laughs> all right buddy get back to your workout thank you <laughs> Bye. see not even a quick answer <laughs> We like talking money, and you should have friends like that, like who just has that information on the tops of their heads where they're just working out. Money nerds. Now, full disclosure, guys, there's a lot of guesswork that goes into this particular process. It's considered by some to be an art form, our own personal interpretation. It's not about getting an exact value amount and then being like, okay, we're going to buy or we're going to sell. It's really just a screening process. It's a starting place. It's a framework. It's, it's a place where you can go bounce ideas off friends like I just did just a second ago with JJ. This process is going to evolve with you, the investor, as you learn and you evolve. Best practice is just, just start. Come up with a price, bounce it off a friend, look at what the professionals are saying. It's really over time and repetition that you're really gonna lock in this process and be confident in the numbers that you come up for yourself. So in this video, there's really only gonna be two steps. One, find the intrinsic value, and then two, determine a margin of safety on that value that we come up with. And I'll explain what margin of safety is in just one second. So you may have heard before that the intrinsic value or the value of an investment is the present day value of all of the future cash flows added up. Mm, sounds simple, right? Essentially, all that means is how much cash is this investment going to generate for you in the future? And then what is the amount of all that cash? What is its present day value today? What's it worth to you right now? Now, the financial metric that I like to use to find intrinsic value is free cash flow. Now, like I said before, there are more accurate ways to do this, but as a beginner, these are numbers that pretty much anybody is gonna be able to find with a very, very simple Google search. So from a technical standpoint, the free cash flow is simply your operating cash flow minus your total capital expenditures. Now, what are capital expenditures? Well, those are really just things that the business needs to spend money on to keep the business operating. And the operating cash flow is strictly just how much cash does this business get from the activities that it does. So once you have a stock that you want to find the fair value of, the first thing you need to do is you need to head to the financial statements of that business. Like I said, there's many, many free resources on the internet. I believe you get what you pay for. I pay for a paid service using Stock Rover. You guys have seen me talk about Stock Rover and use it, and I am going to use it inside this video. But like I said, you don't need these fancy free software. And if you want to see how great it is, I'll leave a link down in the description below. You can get a free trial of Stock Rover. But if not, you can use something as simple as like Google Finance. I know on Google Finance, they give you free cash flow right there. You don't even need to calculate it on your own. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the free cash flow inside that financial statement and I'm going to look back as far as I can. I like to use at least five years, 10 years if possible. But guys, to be honest, if a business is under five years old, it's going to become very, very, very difficult to find a fair value in my opinion. Anything that's under five years old, you're essentially rolling the dice. You're taking a gamble. You're going by FOMO or expectations, especially with these IPO companies. They might have a track record before they went public, but once they go public, they are a completely different animal. So like I said, I'm not saying don't invest in companies less than five years old. I'm saying it's very, very hard to do this with those companies as well as companies that don't have a positive free cash flow. So in this example, because we were just talking about it with JJ a second ago, I'm going to use Intel. I'm going to list out the last 10 years of free cash flow. Now we're going to look at that last 10 years of free cash flow, and we're going to look to see, is it growing and by what percentage is it roughly growing year after year after year? Now, this is the first place interpretation and guesswork is really going to come into play because we need to use that past data to determine how much we think that free cash flow is going to grow in the future 10 years, right? So this is the first place that we can start to skew from one person to another. What you think a company might grow by and what I think a company might grow by could be completely different. But to get that number, I look at different sectors. I've just been doing this a while, so you know what kind of companies kind of grow according to their size, how old they are. Like I said, these are just things you learn over time. But you can use that past growth of free cash flow to get roughly a good idea. The other thing is, inside the spreadsheet, which I will make available to all of my Patreons inside Discord, you can kind of fumble with those numbers a little bit. See what the difference between 6% growth and 8% growth is, or 6% growth and 12% growth. You can kind of vary these numbers to see how much they're actually going to affect the final share price. So now that I've estimated the next 10 years out, I'm gonna take that last year, that 10th year, and assume that we are gonna buy the business for the value of the company in that 11th year, okay? This is called the terminal rate. You can see like a bunch of different names for this, but essentially it is what are we going to pay at the end for this company? Now this multiple, once again, is up to your own personal interpretation. I know many people use 10, but I've seen people go down as low as five if this is a really old or a company that's really not generating a lot of future growth. And I've also seen this multiple go up to 20 if we are in something like tech or something that does have the potential for a long-term future growth. So in this case, I'm just gonna use a nice round number. I'm just gonna use 10X and I'm gonna take that 10th year and I'm gonna multiply it by 10. That's all I'm gonna do. So then if we were to sum up all those numbers, we would have the sum of all of the future cash flows, but we need the present day value. What I mean is money that's in the future is less valuable to us than money say right now. Like if we went to the eighth year, that money, that free cash flow, we have to wait for that, right? Think of it like this. If I said to you, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars now, or I'm going to give you a hundred dollars in a year, you would take the hundred dollars now because money given to you now that you can put to work now is going to have more value. So we need to account for the future cash flows and give it a present day value. Now there's a couple different formulas. I use the one that's right inside, embedded inside Google Sheets. You can look up how to calculate that, but across the board, I've seen this formula pretty much the same everywhere. The thing that is gonna vary is what you want that discounted rate to be. Now I'm gonna use somewhere between 12 and 15% because that's the return that I want to receive every single year. I'm trying to beat the market. If the market is eight to 10%, and I just want to match the market, well, I'll just go into index funds. But if I'm going to be buying an individual stock, I want to beat the market. So I want at least a 12 to 15% return, and that's how much I'm going to discount the future cash flows. Now that I've discounted all the future cash flows, now I can sum them up, and I'm going to get myself a value, the present day value of all of the future cash flows. Now, essentially, we can just take that amount and compare it to the market cap of a company if it's public on the stock market. But we want to go a little bit deeper and we want to actually get a share price. So for that, we're going to need the total shares outstanding, which I've also put here inside the spreadsheet. If we take that market cap and we divide it by the total shares outstanding, that will give us the current share price of the company. So if we take the sum of all of our future cash flows and we divide it by how many shares are outstanding, that should give us a fair value for the stock that we've chosen. 
Now, contrary to popular belief, with all of this guesswork and things like that, my number is not going to be that accurate. Inside my physics class, we're always talking about in labs, you know, accounting for error, experimental error. There is a ton of experimental error inside this particular process, this particular formula. So the last thing that we need to do before we say, okay, this is the price, we need something called the margin of safety. And Warren Buffett is quoted as saying the three most important words in investing are margin of safety. And I guess that really only applies to value investors because I see people that are putting money in with no margin of safety whatsoever. But for us, we definitely want a margin of safety. We want to say, okay, here is the fair value that I got, but let's just say I screw up or let's just say something happens outside of my control in the future. I want to give myself a little bit of a buffer in case I was wrong. Now, how much buffer you want to give yourself really depends on how good at this process do you think you are. Now, I've talked to some people that are like, I'm a stud and they use 20%. I like to personally use about 30 to 35%. And I've seen people that are ultra conservative go all the way up to 50%. And I got to be honest, in this particular market right now, it's going to be very, very hard to find a value stock with a 50% margin of safety. I'm sure it can be done. But those people right now, they're just holding their money in cash and they're really not investing right now or they're selling puts down to a strike price that they think is a fair value. So in this example, guys, I'll use 30% as my margin of safety. That is going to give me the final number that I want to use. Get down in the comments below, guys. Tell me your favorite value stock and what you are just trying to buy a ton of because it's the best price you've ever seen it. But also don't forget to roll the dice a little bit with some overvalued stocks, maybe some spec plays, and see if you can get some bigger returns than 12 to 15%. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And until I see you on the next one, stay positive. Work really, really hard always. Please be kind to other people. Hope you have yourself an amazing day. And even better, tomorrow.